The sun is setting on the coal industry for the big miners. They're using fire sales to get rid of unprofitable mines like Dartbrook, near Musselbrook in the Hunter Valley. If Anglo-American couldn't make it work, one of the largest, uh, most efficient miners in the world, I very much doubt whether anyone else will. When it opened in the 1990s, a four kilometre tunnel was built to transport coal from the underground mine to the mine's railway. But Dartbrook was closed during the mining boom because of gas, water and safety problems. If this was a tier one asset, it wouldn't have been idled in 2006. It has a very high cost profile. Small company Australian Pacific Coal thinks the mine is a tier one asset. It plans to buy it for $25 million and up to $25 million in future royalties. It wants to build an open cut mine at the site. Australian Pacific Coal is being financed by Northern Territory property developer John Foxy Robinson and Pearl Baron Nick Paspali. Mr Robinson did not respond to requests for an interview. Former Chief Executive Nathan Tinkler had to step down after being declared bankrupt. He remains an advisor to the firm. Mr Tinkler and his family own around one third of Australian Pacific Coal. I think there's a certain amount of uh, caution uh, to, to deal with uh, any business that, uh, that he is involved with. The Dartbrook mine is one of several being sold by big players to smaller operators, but the fear is the small companies won't have enough money to fund a proper clean-up. Bankrupt US coal giant Peabody Energy is trying to sell its Wilkie Creek mine in Queensland. Struggling Anglo-American is selling nine mines and one coal project in New South Wales and Queensland. And Rio Tinto has sold two Hunter Valley coal mines to smaller players. The New South Wales government holds a $9 million rehabilitation bond from Anglo for the clean-up of Dartbrook, which Australian Pacific Coal has to replace. But Martin Rush is worried the final clean-up costs could be much more. This is a mine that has no completion criteria yet. Um, and until that completion criteria is settled as part of the rehabilitation management plan and closure planning, a part of which is consultation with the community, of course, about where uh, the community wants the rehabilitation quality to land, uh, it's impossible to know what the rehab cost will be. So, Tony, what have we got here? Uh, well, in the front we've got the evaporation ponds. This is where they dispose of their water. Tony Lonigan lives near Dartbrook. His family sold some of their land to the mine. Nearby is Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's family farm and thoroughbred studs. Mr Lonigan wants the clean-up costs to be worked out before the mine is sold. You've got to seal the tunnel, presumably, or grout the tunnel to stop the water coming in. You've got to remove the washery and all the infrastructure. You've got power lines all over the place that have got to be pulled down. Um, I'd like to see a proper analysis done of that, um, of, of the breakdown. Of Anglo-American says it costs less to rehabilitate an underground mine than an open cut. It's already done some minor rehabilitation at the site. The $9 million bond has been approved by the New South Wales government. Gavin Mudd has studied mine cleanups around Australia. He says problems like acid mine drainage often emerge years later. So I think we are at great risk of actually underestimating both the, the current costs and future liabilities associated with rehabilitating a lot of these very large mining projects. Environmental lawyer David Barnden argues selling to minnows allows big miners to walk away from their commitments. The bigger companies recognise the risk in terms of the current coal prices and also the risk of the costs of rehabilitation. So there's a real race to the door to get out of these rehabilitation obligations and which is why you see these mines selling very, very cheaply. The Musselbrook Council has asked the New South Wales Auditor General to reassess the adequacy of all rehabilitation bonds. There is a risk if the rehabilitation cost that the community ultimately arrives at after settling the, the closure or the, uh, the, the uh, completion criteria for the rehab is much higher than nine million, that the state government will have to do that work. We need to make sure that the community, both the local community and the community of the state, is protected from liabilities in the event that this all turns out to be mere speculation. There's a lot at stake as smaller players take a punt on coal.